This is the first of two videos I'm planning to put out over this weekend, and this video involves choke groups. So choke groups were introduced in version 1.36, and I just completely glossed over it. But for the sake of keeping this channel uh, somewhat comprehensive, at least in terms of this software, I figured I should go back and do a video talking about choke groups. And I know choke groups were an extremely popular request, mainly because many people asked me about it. So if people are asking me about it, clearly it's a feature request that people want to see. In fact, it was maybe the feature most requested. So let's talk about choke groups and talk about the predecessor. And, you know, choke groups are what I would call more of a convenience than a necessity. So we're going to go on here and we're going to use the drum machine. That's where you're going to find the choke groups inside of this program. And I'm just going to go over and I'm going to find a couple of samples. So one is going to be uh, a kick drum. doesn't really matter what kick drum. Just want to make sure it's something that people will be able to hear even on small speakers. And then I'm also going to look for some kind of a symbol, or more likely you'd have something like an open hi-hat. So let's see what we've got here in terms of symbols. Okay, although that's an annoying sound, it's going to work for our purposes because it rings out for quite a while. So let me just see if I can get the right octave here. Okay, cool. So the predecessor to the choke group is really setting up each drum sample to release immediately, or even in this case, this very, very short release time is going to work. So you can see, we don't really need to worry about a decay because we want full on sustain, full on sustain, we don't have to worry about a decay, and then a pretty short release time. So let's put it down even lower. Okay, I'm not hearing any clicking when that ends. So that should be fine. Okay, so if you think about it, if I go in here now and I program in a couple of notes, if I make my note very short, but the sample itself is very long, it's just going to cut off immediately. So if we listen to this here, we'll just turn loop on for the sake of it. You can hear how that just cuts off immediately. And with a choke group, what we're really looking to do is have another sample be the thing that cuts this off. So let's say that my next kick drum was coming here. So if I wanted to create a faux choke group, all I'd have to do is stretch this out right to the point of this kick. And it's really in essence choked it. So that's really what the choke group is doing. But the advantage of actually working this way is that let's say I'm working on something that's a little bit more like syncopated, like some hip hop that's really kind of swinging on and off the grid. That's kind of what gives it its character. The beauty of this is that I can go in and kind of manually adjust when I want this cutting off. So even though this is, let's say, still being choked, it's being choked early, so it's giving me that extra bit of feel, a little bit of extra flair I can uh, put onto this. Let's have it be a little more extreme. So that's a flexibility that I can execute using this more like manual choke group approach. Now, the downside to this is it's not very convenient and it takes quite a bit of time. So the inverse that we can use are indeed the actual choke groups themselves. And those you'll find inside of the drum machine. It's a very simple concept. Whatever sample that I want to be choked, I just need to go in, right click it. You see here we have this choked by option. And I prefer using the choke by as compared to choke targets. It's just the inverse, but it makes more sense for me to think, okay, what is going to choke this? And the thing that's going to choke it is the kick drum. All right. So now if I'm playing my samples back and I'm playing this out, it's currently not really doing what I want it to do because it's still cutting off. So I'm going to go into the sampler now and I'm going to put the release all the way up so that even just a tap would play the full sample. And I'll do the same thing with the kick drum. It doesn't really matter, but I'll just go ahead and do that for now for the sake of continuity. But now if I play this and I hit the kick drum, it's going to cut off this cymbal sample. So.
Okay, and if we look at this, just uh, recording something so you can see it. That's going to now ring out because I'm not hitting the kick drum. But what you can see is that even just a short tap of this particular uh, note here is going to ring it out because we have that long release. And then wherever that kick drum hits, it's going to cut it off. So if I just move the kick drum up, you can hear this in its full glory. And that is honestly all there is to the choke groups inside of Bitwig Studio. Very intuitive, very straightforward. Um, anybody can do it, basically, and it's an easy concept. So for everybody who was asking for the choke groups, that's how you do it. You just right-click on whatever cell of the drum machine you want to have choked, and then you choose what you want it to be choked by. Inversely, if we wanted to set up the same thing here, I could go into the kick, and I could choose choke target, and I could have that be the symbol. So now we're doing the exact same thing, only instead of thinking about it as a choked by, we're thinking, what do we want this sample to then choke? So if I go ahead and set that up. And you can even see how it goes red whenever it gets choked. Sort of like what happens if somebody's actually choking you and you're struggling to breathe. Uh, but we're making music, we're not talking about violence, so uh, all in all, that's the idea behind the choke groups, and I hope that's given you a little bit of help if you were confused as to where you go about finding and setting that up.